Hey, I'm Ewan. I'm Beat. We're from the Sheepdogs, and you're watching Loud Guitars. So the first step was like bringing under the guitar to bounce out sound, and then recently my brother James Travis was playing keyboards and singing. He's your brother? Yeah. Oh, okay, that's cool. And you joined the band when? Six. 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 And that's when the touring started getting very serious. I think I went on their first tour. No. The first tour. We knew that. I mean, all the bands we saw looked up to had two guitars. And the thing about it, the, the really good rock trios always had like a legendary guitarist. It was like you know, Joel Walsh and Jimmy Hendrix, or you know, Led Zeppelin, Jimmy Page and stuff. So you know, I knew I was going to be able to carry that with that load. So you know, two guitars are better than one in those cases. It worked so well for you. I had such difficulty trying to determine who I should be looking at. That 
would be nice. Yeah, so I, you know, that's, I mean, we, I mean, for me, the guitar I use, it doesn't, it's kind of unique in that it doesn't sound like, unless you get the exact same guitar to pull out another Gibson, it doesn't sound as strong or it sounds different, it screws me out. So. I think you get used to the little naps that your guitar has, you know. Some strings, so oh, good. Props yeah, to like Dario. Boxes, some good. Yeah. Yay! Um, Big ups to them. Yeah, no, we definitely do a lot of bending. My guitar stays in tune pretty well. That's it's a weird guitar, so I'm just. Is that like, something the Firebirds are known for? That they stay, that they hold well? I don't know. I have a weird one. It's like a studio model, so it has sort of the rounded edges, and it also has full size humbuckers as opposed to mini okay. humbuckers, so it's a little different. But it just, I don't know, it's a, it's a war horse, it's taking a beating. Like, we played, last summer, we played in this festival in North Bay, Ontario, and it was storming, and it basically, like, flooded the stage. We probably played, like, three songs too long, and we were just getting bombarded, and all our gear was just yeah. pretty much toast, but we lost the pedal. Oh, you lost the guitar, the, the guitar like survived. The <laughs> They're definitely in need of some, uh, some rehab yeah. at some point. <laughs> Actually, I don't think my guitar has been the same since that day. <laughs> really? So the wiring is a little funky. Yours is a little funky too. Huh? Yeah, we haven't had time to get them fixed. Really, you really get beat. But I think that, you know, kind of gives some character as well. Like, Absolutely. Mine's kind of wearing on the back. It's nice, like, tobacco yellow. I don't know if it's from the sweat or... But it's, it's, it's actually looks pretty cool. Uh, it's, there's nothing like a nice Here. board. Yeah. I mean, People pay to get those new... The fender is it? Yeah. The new strats? The new old the new style old. B-up, like, yeah. Joe Strong or whatever. Yeah, my paint is starting to chip on top. Yeah, you know, do yourself. Now, you, uh, since, since it was a festival type of situation, you didn't have your backline with you. What are you guys using to play through? Uh, we pretty much always play Fender Twins. Okay. Um, because we do a lot of flying, we do get the Prince back on it. So, you know, we, they, they're usually those new reissues of like, I think it's the 65 reissue that they always have. We just make sure, we just insist that there's no. Ma- sure. not, not the ones with the master volume, because those ones, they don't. The thing that we value about the twin is that you can turn it up really loud. Oh, and sir? it does okay, the, good. <laughs> You can turn it up really loud, and it, just, it doesn't break up, like it stays clean. That's, okay. that's about the most important to us, is, uh, is to be able to, to you know, crank it up and not. And just instead of getting dirty, it just gets that kind of clean bite to it. Yes. If you want dirty, you can use a, you know, a tube screamer or something. sitting in the walls. Okay. So yeah. they'll be waiting for us to do our actual class. And that's what you use in the studio? Well, in the studio, we flew into that too. So, you know, we used uh, three amps primarily in the new album. Okay. That's what we used. Uh, the costume too. Yeah, yeah, we used, well, maybe four amps. We mainly three. We used Fender Reverb from the early 70s or so where the tubes were actually falling out of it, so I actually had to turn it upside down and put it on its head. <laughs> so it looked, you know, it looks like this is cool trick, you know, oh, you can turn it upside oh, down. Oh yeah, the kids are going to be doing that <laughs> yeah, all over really, the place. Literally just, just to keep the tubes, the tubes from falling out. That's yeah. so great. That, and then we used uh, two really dirty old amps. We used like, a custom, amp, or a premier custom, whatever it's called. And then, uh, although the Fender, the Princeton, Princeton. Princeton. the Princeton. Which is just you know really ballsy kind of like lead tone. Peel the paint. And are you allowed to talk about who produced the last record? Sure. The record that's not out yet. Do you have a title for it? Uh, it's just gonna be self-titled. Okay. Self-titled. Uh, Patrick Carney is the producer of it. Okay. Yeah. And, and we're working with a kind of a group of guys in here. We had our friend Austin Scaggs and uh, Roger Mutno is the uh, engineer in his studio in Nashville. So this is album number four. Did yeah. you did you have some ideas of what you wanted this record to sound like, um, and what was really important, or were you open to getting in the studio and seeing what the vibe felt like? Um, 
you know, I think we maybe would have had more of a sort of premeditated concept had we had more time. You know, the last album was like, you know, we spent all summer just doing it on our own, just, you know, totally, uh, you know, kind of to our own devices. This time, it was like, we have X amount of time, two weeks basically to work with that before he had to go on tour with the Black Keys. And, you know, we came right off the road, so it wasn't like, you know, it was like, get to work. So we kind of had to dig and, and dig deep and just kind of come up with whatever we could. And, you know, just had a bunch of songs and just basically being under the gun, I think, helped us to make the album that we did. Sometimes, you know, you take your time and make a good album. Other times, you know, that pressure can galvanize you and you can result in making it. Absolutely. That's good. That's it's so important. You know, you come in and you're excited, and it's the fruits of your labor. Absolutely. You're gonna be listening to it for a long time and playing the songs for a long time too. Yes, I feel it's, it's quite strong. We're happy about it. Is it. Does it die? Does it um, diversify a lot from previous albums, or is it more of the same awesomeness? You know, it's like it's the same. It's the same vibe, you know. But there's sort of some way in it. Try not to repeat the same tricks, but there's a lot of the same elements that you know. It's, for us, you know, we've just been using based on this, 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 all the elements of harmony and melody and, and good groove and interesting. Story. So it, we just made sure that all those elements were present. New songs and there's some new flavors. Whether you know there's a song with guitar on it or there's a song that has five eight time or just you know give them something different but keep all the good cheap dogs at once. Who does most of the writing? Uh, you write the songs, you write the melodies, you write the lyrics. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, you know, a lot of times it's, you know, we get together and we can come up with the arrangements and, and uh, various other sort of, all of the sort of the fixings, you know, kind of together. Especially this album is a lot of arranging as a man because just coming right off the road, there wasn't that much time to sort of get stuff ready, so there was a lot of memories about this. <laughs> Up 
to us and he said, are they not so amazing? And I said, yeah, they're amazing. And he said, I think I have a man crush. <laughs> he was so blown away. Yeah, you know, and then so we've got the little kids next to us that were freaking out. They came to see you guys. They were the ones whose autographs you just signed on right. the way over. Yeah. And then um, and then the older man. So it's great. It's like such a wide demographic. And, you know, we pride ourselves on just, you know, making music that's very inclusive. But, uh, I mean, I think, you know, it's that old adage, like, there's only two kinds of music, good or bad. I think good music, everybody can get into. It. We're not making music for like, a certain type. You know, we want old, you know, we want all types of bands. So it's, I love that's music to our Well, congratulations. I wish you all the very best. And thank you so much for taking the time.